Surgical Anatomy, Approaches and Biomechanics of the Elbow. Kamal Gakis MD. Alanya Baskin University Research and Practice Center 07. This video was produced from BookSource, European Surgical Orthopedics and Traumatologia. The EFORT Textbook Citation. Bentley, G. 2014. European Surgical Orthopedics and Traumatologia The E4 Textbook. Springer. General Introduction. As elbow arthroscopy is gaining popularity, limited exposures of the elbow are less commonly required. When they are indicated, the surgeon should be cautious, and avoid injury to the superficial nerves which may lead to painful neuroma. When dealing with more complex pathology, it is desirable to have the possibility of extending the approach. An extensile posterior cutaneous incision, the so-called universal approach, allows the surgeon to access to the posterior, medial and lateral. The elbow is not only an intermediate joint that positions the arm in space, but it is also a load-bearing joint which acts as a fulcrum for the forearm ND hand, requiring complex interaction between mobility and stability to adequately perform daily activities. Understanding elbow kinematics is crucial to treat injuries affecting the ligamentous and bony structures which have great implications for stability and harmonious motion of the elbow joint. Anatomy. The elbow contains three separate articulations. The ulnohumeral joint is a modified hinge joint that allows flexion and extension. The radiohumeral joint is a combined hinge and pivot joint that permits flexion and extension as well as rotation of the head of the radius on the capitellum of the humerus. The proximal radio ulnar joint facilitates rotation during supination and pronation figure. Osseous stability is reinforced by the medial and lateral collateral ligament LCL complexes. The MCL complex comprises anterior, posterior, and transverse bundles and, especially the anterior bundle provides valgus stability. The posterior band of the MCL is commonly contracted in post-traumatic elbows, and when dealing with a stiff elbow, it may need to be released. Figure 2. Figure. Medial aspect of the elbow. Distal humerus. 1. Anterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament. 2. And proximal ulna. 3. Sublimis tubercle, asterisk, reproduced by permission of Lusa, et al. 1. The LCL complex, especially the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, confers rotational and varus stability. Figure. Lateral aspect of the elbow. Distal humerus, 1, proximal radius, 2, and proximal ulna, 3. Annular ligament, 4, and the lateral collateral cubital ligament, 5. Four muscle groups act on the elbow. The major flexors are the biceps brachii, which also supinates the forearm when the elbow is flexed, brachioradialis, and brachialis muscles while the extensors are the triceps and anconius muscles. The supinators consist of the supinator and biceps brachii muscles. Pronation is accomplished by the pronator quadratus, pronator teres, and flexor carpi radialis muscles. The elbow also has a complex innervation, and all the nerves that cross the elbow may be at risk during certain surgical procedures. The median nerve crosses the elbow medially and passes through the two heads of the pronator teres, a potential site of entrapment. Figure. Anterior aspect of the elbow. Biceps brachii muscle. 1. Median nerve and its branches for the pronator teres muscle. 2. Humeral artery. 3. And flexo pronator mass. 4. The ulnar nerve passes along the medial arm and posterior to the medial epicondyle through the cubital tunnel, a likely site of compression, figure. It is important to recognize that the floor of the cubital tunnel is actually the superficial aspect of the anterior band of the MCL. This anatomic reference should be taken into consideration when dealing with pathology in the medial compartment of the elbow. The radial nerve descends the arm laterally. Dividing into superficial, sensory, and deep, motor or posterior interosseous, branches, figure. The deep branch must then pass through the arcade of Fros, a fibrous arch formed by the proximal margin of the superficial head of the supinator muscle, where it is most susceptible to injury, especially when developing lateral approaches to the elbow joint. I.g. Figure. The anterior aspect of the elbow. Brachioradialis muscle. 1. Radial nerve. 2. Brachialis muscle, 3. And biceps brachii muscle, 4. 
humeral artery, 5, and the radial recurrent artery, 6, ascending between the branches of the radial nerve, 2. Proximally, the radial nerve crosses from the posterior to the anterior compartment of the arm at a distance from the lateral epicondyle equivalent to 1.5 times the inter-epicondylar distance. This anatomical reference is also very useful to avoid complications related to this nerve when developing triceps reflecting approaches. The functional range of motion of the elbow for activities of daily living is 30 to 130 degree of flexion and 50 degree of supination and pronation. But may be very limiting for more specific pursuits. 